at least if the yields are starting to reverse, that's going to be the trigger where Ethereum against Bitcoin starts to go up and also when the entire market is going to do well. Hello guys, Bitcoin just hit a new all-time high in the euro and the crypto market is heating up. With elections approaching and altcoin season possibly on the horizon, Michael Van de Poppy, our expert analyst, is here to break down what's happening. From the surging ETF inflows to macroeconomic data that could shift everything, he'll share his insights on what it all means for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the altcoin market. Let's dive in and prepare for the exciting road ahead. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. The ETF um, inflow has been going through the roof. That is the actual reason why Bitcoin has been hitting or getting close towards a new all-time high. In two days in a row, we had almost 2 billion in inflow in the Bitcoin ETF. And since the 10th of October, we had close to 5 billion in net inflow in the ETF. There's one day where you can see that there is no inflow, which is on the last day of October. And that was also the day that Bitcoin started to correct again. Why did that take place? Well, the last day of the month is usually rollover day. Um, not much of trading, very illiquid options are getting rolled over, which is also taking place the week before. So generally, that is a day where you can see a lot of volatility because of illiquid markets. So I expect that with the ETF inflow, it's going to pick up again after unemployment data comes out. Now, that is super positive for Bitcoin. And we've seen that in the euro valuation, we've reached a new all-time high. And Bitcoin basically just popped above the previous all-time high, took the liquidity there and fell down again. Um, in the US dollar value, that hasn't been taking place, but we are getting close towards that actual bull cycle. And the question is, when is Ethereum and when are the altcoins going to move? That is all depending on macroeconomic data. And this week was the big market mover from the previous month. And it's also going to be the market mover for this month and the upcoming months. And I'll tell you why. First thing, on Tuesday, we had job opening data, which has been the worst in three and a half years. So high level, the Fed has two important indicators to look at, which is inflation, that is going down, and the labor markets. They want to strengthen the labor markets because then the economy is going to grow. That's their thesis. Now, what you don't want to see is that they have been doing the rate hikes in 2022, that that is going to have such a, a disastrous impact on the economy that the labor markets are going to get worse. So once the labor markets are getting worse, that's going to be the period where the Fed needs to do QE or needs to do rate cuts. And that is where the pendulum that we're moving into and if we look at those factors, then the job opening data has seen a big miss and it has been signaling that the labor markets are getting worse, through which the worst data in three and a half years came out. Now, on Wednesday, we also had GDP coming out, which was also lower than expected. So technically, the economy is getting worse. Now, we need to have a side note that this video was made before the unemployment data came out, the of official number, but it's expected that the yields that have been showing a lot of strength in October are going to reverse once the labor markets are getting worse. So that's what we're looking at. And the moment is that, or the important part is that when the yields are going to drop, Ethereum becomes more interesting. And when Ethereum becomes more interesting, DeFi follows along and the entire ETH ecosystem and then also the other altcoins are starting to move. But at this point, we see that ETH is just making lower lows and that is the only reason for that is the macroeconomic data. It has nothing to do with Ethereum Foundation selling tokens. It has nothing to do with the amount of progression that ETH makes. It has all to do with the macroeconomic data and the youth hunters just staying into government bonds, but more on that in a little bit. Now, there are some key events coming up, and I, I well, it's not a surprise that the presidential elections 
are going to be a big factor for the markets. And I've been saying it a few times already. I think we overrate the importance of the elections. I think we are not watching the labor market data at all, but the labor market data are more important than the elections because the labor markets are technically showing what the policy of two years ago have given as an impact. And whether Kamala Harris or Trump is going to be elected, the policy still needs to be adjusted from what they've been doing in the previous years. So it doesn't really have that much of an impact. The only big impact is on the short term that if Trump gets elected, is that we're going to see Ross is going to be free. But secondly, is that he's going to push forward with Bitcoin and crypto as he has been saying his congratulations to all the Bitcoin holders with the 16th year anniversary of the Bitcoin white paper, technically. Um, and he has been shooting to Kamala Harris in his recent, recent tweet where he said that crypto is going to be big again. So that is going to have an additional positive impact to the markets, that if Trump wins, we likely shoot off already. But if Trump wins, there's a very significant chance that the yields are going to drop as well, because um, it's likely that he's going to, to push the economy forward, to print again, and just having a different policy than Kamala Harris had. So that is what we need to look at. And then... The day after the elections have been taking place, um, we are going to, to provide a new video, of course. But the day after is going to be the day that the Fed is going to announce the rate cuts again. And if we look at it, the expectations are that we are having a 25 bips rate cut, which is already priced in. And the markets are currently pricing in no more rate cuts. And I'll get to that in a little bit. And that's why it's important for Ethereum, and that's why it's important to keep a look at it. Then if the Fed is going to do more rate cuts, or depending on that actual event, it is also important to keep an eye on the amount of liquidity being added into the markets. China is currently pushing it forward big time, but as you can see in the chart that I have here, the Fed is still um, basically shrinking the balance sheet through QT, but we are on edge of having QE again. And once that takes place, we're going to have that additional liquidity being added into a positive market environment. Now, it's time to look at the charts where I can give you some more background on why I'm looking at these specific factors. And the first thing I've got here is Bitcoin against USDT, which, as you can see, has seen a tremendous move towards the all-time high, but couldn't really break through it. I think the all-time high is also a level where a lot of people are going to be forced to sell um, or are looking to take profits. A lot of shorts are taking place um, until it starts to break through it in one go. I think it's just still consolidating. And as I said, the last day of the month is usually a very weak day. Um, and that has been shown in which not a lot of inflow took place on the Bitcoin ETF. And as a result, we saw a slight correction taking place for Bitcoin. Um, and we are approaching the unemployment data, which is a big factor still for the markets to start moving. But I'll get to that in a little bit. Now, once we discuss Bitcoin in itself, what is important here to look at? We generally don't want to lose this trend. So you want to see that Bitcoin holds above 67 to 69K. If that takes place, the trend is in place. And once we get towards the all-time high, that is going to be the moment that we start the acceleration. So perhaps we're going to have a build up towards the elections, get towards the all time high, and then through the elections, we push ourselves towards a new all time high and the actual breakout. The other case is we lose 67 to 69K. And once we lose that, we are taking all these lows and we are going to take the liquidity, which is likely going to be a significant flush in the markets. And that's why I marked the next level at 61K as the important factor here. But that is also going to push down the altcoins again. Now, I mentioned the chart that is important to look at is the yield chart, which is currently at 4.3%. You need to remember that. That's the 10-year yield. And the two-year yield is currently at 4.18%. Remember those data points or those numbers because I'll get back to that in a little bit. Now, this chart has been going up since the middle of September, which is since the actual Fed meeting took place. 
and likely it's getting into a new high. But what we see here is that Ethereum is heavily correlated to this event. All depending on the upcoming days, but we might be having a massive bullish divergence within this structure for ETH against Bitcoin. So that might be the actual low for ETH is coming in. But if this loses 0 0.035, we're going to have another 15 to 20% correction and might be in line with Bitcoin dropping to 61K. And that's the final capitulation. Now, what we see here is a chart of ETH with two vertical blue lines. The first vertical blue line is on Wednesday, 18th of September. From that point, Ethereum rallied by approximately 11%, and also the altcoins did uh, go up by 50 to 60%. That was the day that the Fed announced the rate cuts of 50 bips. However, the Fed didn't have any forward-looking rate cuts in perspective. The only thing they said is there is likely another rate cut taking place, but they are not expected to do rate cuts in 2025. And based on that, and two weeks later we had the unemployment week, Ethereum started to fall down again as the yield started to break to the upside. So the unemployment data was more positive than expected, job openings and also the unemployment data itself. And because of that, Ethereum gave back all the, all the gains that it made as the yields continued to go up. And that's why we're currently at new cycle lows. So if the unemployment data comes in, and of course we updated it next week, but at least if the yields are starting to reverse, that's going to be the trigger where Ethereum against Bitcoin starts to go up and also when the entire market is going to do well. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Michael Van de Poppy. If you enjoyed this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.